I believe that the 21st century will be the century in which social science comes of age. In the early 20th century there was a revolution in physics with quantum mechanics and the theory of relativity. And in the mid 20th century there was a revolution in biochemistry with the discovery of the structure of DNA. I think that in the 21st century there's going to be a revolution in the understanding of social systems. People sometimes talk about social scientists as having physics envy. Social scientists look at physics which has a large amount of agreed theory and is precise, mathematical and predictive and they feel inadequate when they compare it with their own discipline which is fuzzy, verbal, full of debates and disputes and hopeless at making predictions. But the reason social scientists have made so little progress is not because they are somehow stupid. It's because the problems they are dealing with are vastly more difficult than those that physicists are working on. In physics, systems typically involve just a few elements. Or alternatively, they involve such huge numbers of elements that the law of averages applies to a high degree of accuracy. But social scientists are dealing with an intermediate level of complexity, where there are lots of elements, but not so many that their individuality becomes irrelevant. And in physics, interactions between elements are typically quite sparse and weak. And what's more, they are linear, which basically means that one and one makes two. If you double the input, you get double the output. But with societies, interactions are strong and numerous and they are non-linear. If I have one friend and I add another friend, you don't get just me with two friends, but my friends might become friends with each other, creating a triangle. The resulting system is more than the sum of its parts. In fact, non-linear systems also occur in physics. If physicists have seemed so successful, it is because they have largely ignored those and concentrated on linear systems which are much easier to cope with. People talk of social science as soft science, but social science is actually hard, very hard to think about and get clear in your mind. There are two reasons why I think the 21st century will be the century of social science. Firstly, social theorists have made a great deal of progress over the last 30 or 40 years. They have begun to resolve the old argument about whether societies should be explained in terms of human decision making or in terms of impersonal social forces. It's recognised that the two perspectives are both important and need to be part of a combined theory and it's becoming clearer how this could be done. When I was at university in the early 80s there was some graffiti over the toilet bowl saying sociology degrees, please take one. But today, sociologists and anthropologists are taken increasingly seriously. In the defence industry where I work, it's become quite common to see requests for social scientists to contribute to research. The second reason why I think the 21st century will be the century of social science is that the right mathematical tools are becoming available thanks to the new discipline of complexity. With things like networks, emergence and self-organisation, Complexity theorists are generating concepts and techniques that are highly suited to the study of society. A problem with previous attempts to make social sciences more mathematical, for example in economics, was that people simply took over the mathematics that has worked so well in physics. But the computer scientist John von Neumann pointed out that physicists develop their mathematics to solve the problems of physics. And there's no reason to suppose that the same mathematics will work for social science. Instead, social scientists will need to develop their own mathematics. And because the problems of social science are so hard, the mathematics of social science is likely to be even more abstruse and difficult to understand than that of physics. So today it may be social scientists who envy physicists, but in times to come it will surely be the physicists who feel inadequate when they compare their rather elementary systems and rather simple equations with the fantastically complex theorems of social scientists and the immensely powerful and sophisticated mathematical tools they use to study them.